just moving my hands like this, there's essentially going to be no resistance, right? The sand grains are going to kind of roll over one another, right? But if I squeeze them first and then move my hands like that, there's going to be some strength, and that's due to the internal friction. And uh, ignore the title on this. Uh, that's a mistake. This has nothing to do with that. This just shows a sort of an application, and we'll do a lot. This is sort of a, a prelude of things to come, but th this is um, with respect to drilling, right? So if we, in a, in a drilling scenario, we're typically talking about we, we, we move into radial coordinates because our well bore we can idealize as a circle. And so we move into radial coordinates. And in radial coordinates, uh, or cylindrical coordinates in the wellbore, the RR component, right? So remember, remember in your, uh, so the RR component would be the component of stress that sort of acts against the wellbore, right? Well, that, Sigma RR, it turns out in, in terms of principal stresses, that's the smallest principal stress, and that's equal to uh, delta P, where delta P is the mud weight minus the pore pressure, right? And so uh, you can see if, if, if this is balanced, right? If, this, if, the, if, you're, if you're using a balanced drilling where the mud weight is equal to the pore pressure, then sigma three is going to be zero, right? So you're going to have a you're going to have a more circle that's like that, right? Well, anything above this line is an invalid state of stress. So any portion of the well bore, you know, as you go around the well bore, any portion of the well bore that's in that regime is going to exhibit failure, and you're going to get breakouts along the sides of the well bore, okay? But if we just increase the mud weight. If we increase the mud weight, and even if we don't change anything else, if we increase the mud weight, we push, you know, from here we push the, the more circle over there, thereby shrinking it, right? And if we shrink it, then we're underneath, we're underneath this line, which was where failure would occur, and we can add some stability to the well bore. Uh, the the theta theta term this would be your your tangential uh, hoop stress. Right? So this is up here sigma theta theta. So that's sigma one in terms of the in the wellbore coordinate. So the idea here is that you know by by drilling in an overbalanced right where your mud weight is higher than your pore pressure, you can you essentially shrink the more circle and get it off of the failure line and therefore, therefore add some stability to the well bore. And we'll do a lot more of this later, but this is just a sort of a prelude of how we can use these more circles to determine where the well bores will fail. And of course, a hundred years ago drillers knew this, you know, but they didn't, without more circle, they just through empirical you know, tr trial and error, they, they figured this out themselves. So that's just one one aside. I mean, but as a, as another side, so you, you say, well, okay, well, it adds stability. So why not just always do that? Why not just always drill overbalance? You guys have all had drilling, right? So since we don't want breakouts, we, we want stable well bores. Why not? So that we, why don't we just always drill overbalance? What's that? Well, it slows down your the, it slows down your rate of penetration, right? and you can actually drill down you can actually drill underbalanced, and if you drill underbalanced, you're producing reservoir fluids during the, and that res when you're producing reservoir fluids, it can help lift material out. Right? So that's another when you're drilling overbalanced, your your mud weight's heavier than the pore pressure, so you're pushing things down on the drill bit, right? So you don't get the the assistance that a slight underbalance or even even balance would give in the terms of lifting lifting the materials out of the well bore. Right? So now you're when you're overbalanced you're you're pushing material, keeping it held down on the well bore. 
which slows down the growing process. Uh, do what? If you're if you're if you're overbalanced, you're you're moving the more circle this way, and so I mean this is this is a um, material property essentially. This line doesn't change, right? So here, this one is for weak rock and strong rock. In this case, they both have the same internal friction, but they have different cohesions, right? But these these lines are fixed on this plot because they're they're from the material properties of the rock, right? The only thing we can control is the state of stress in the well bore with the mud weight. And so if we're overbalanced, we're moving the circle this way. Yeah. Um, even if the hoop stress is fixed, you can you, you can certainly control that because that's the, right? So you what you're going to do, this is fixed, and if you push it this way, it's a circle. You're shrinking the diameter of the circle, and if you shrink the diameter of the circle, you get it off of that line. This this guy this guy is going to be determined. We'll see later. This guy is going to be determined really by the in situ stresses in the air, right? whereas this guy is determined by the stress difference on the wellbore. So this is the one we can control. So this is fixed. That's fixed. If we push it this way, we shrink the circle and we get it off that line. And that gives us stability. 